Hey guys, it's Christopher Tom here, back at it again with some more epic Fortnite content. I know what you're thinking, a Q&A? That's, that's never been done before. Nobody has ever done that before. It's crazy. Well, as you know, we here at the Christopher Tom channel like to keep things original and cool and epic. But I told you guys to ask me questions, and I got quite a lot of questions. So today, we're gonna answer them. Get ready. How long does it take to make a video from idea to finish? What's the most difficult part? That's a great question, and it's something that I've actually wondered a lot myself, so I decided to keep track of the exact amount of time it takes for me to make my videos, and I'd have to say uh, it's somewhere between 10 and 20 hours. Like the Bobby Burns video took about 22 hours to make, which is because it was a 10 minute long video and it was full of analysis, and it was always like, okay, I'm gonna say this, or no, cut that part out. And I didn't have a script outline either, so a lot of it was just stuff that I wrote down and I was tweaking as I went on, and that's not really a good way to work. My video about why negativity gets clicks took about 21 hours to make because a lot of the stock footage that I had originally planned to use for visuals wasn't really cutting it, so I decided to go to Flash and make some of my own visuals, so that definitely took some extra time. But those are just the most egregious examples, for the most part they're around like 10 hours. The last three serious videos I did were basically hovering around the 10 hour mark. What's a better anime, Cory in the House or Caillou? I definitely have to say Caillou. I mean, have you seen the amount of Caillou Gets Grounded videos on YouTube? It's just ridiculous, dude. I swear, the kid's always getting grounded for something. The kid's just a little rascal. What are you saying for crying out loud, Caillou? Dad, why you need to ground me for stupid reasons? I hate you, Dad. Dad, I can believe you ground me a lot! And also, he's just so hashtag relatable. I mean, the kid's basically just a cancer patient, just like I was. So first of all, you notice instantly that he is bald. Man, why is being bald so hard? Everyone thinks I have cancer. Who is your favorite music artist and why? My favorite band of all time has to be Oasis. I know a lot of people only know them as the band behind Wonderwall, you know, the epic meme song. Uh, any anyway, here's Wonderwall, guys. But to me, they're honestly so much more than that. I always just really enjoyed rock music with melodic sensibilities, and I feel like Oasis really scratched that itch for me. They were able to fuse pop melodies with a certain sense of bravado and swagger. And out of all of the bands that I've gotten into, I definitely have to say Oasis has had the most staying power with me. Their stuff is always just so fun to listen to, and honestly their first two albums definitely maybe in What's the Story Morning Glory are absolute classics no matter what anybody says. When are you going to dance for us, you slave? Probably not anytime soon, but because you asked so nicely, you can have this short clip of me dabbing two years ago at a school dance. Uh, did you get cancer from commenting on too many Turkey Tom videos? Probably honestly. You're gonna hear from my lawyer. Why are you so epic, me man? Look, I'm sorry, dude. It's a disease, all right? Are you legal yet? I bet Artist Unknown would like to know. How old are you? I'm actually 18 years old. I know it's very hard to believe. I'm not a very big boy. I'm not very tall. I'm not very muscular. I'm 18, okay? I'm, I'm a big boy, okay? I can do big boy things like vote, pay taxes, um, vote. Can vote, guys. What kind of music do you like? Um, I really like power pop. I love the fusion of catchy pop melodies fused with distorted guitars. I've been trying to get more into shoegaze recently. I think it's a really cool genre. I'd love to make a uh, Christopher Tom shoegaze or something like that. What inspired you to start writing your own music? When I was like 13, I would make like these little songs, if you could call them that, in Sony Vegas. Like I'd find random stuff to sample and I'd just like pitch shift them. It wasn't very good, but it was fun to make. I had a lot of fun doing it, and it was very interesting. And at the time, I was really into Oasis. And that's relevant, because Oasis was the band that convinced me that I could do my own music. It kind of blew me away how simple their songwriting was at its core. They used a lot of basic chord progressions, and their songs were pretty easy to play on guitar. And I just thought, wow, if they could make songs this simple, but they sounded so good, then maybe I could do the same thing. And that was a really cool thought. So I got this program called Tux Guitar, it's basically guitar tablature software, and I would use the software to write songs. And they were pretty rough around the edges because I still didn't have a good idea of how to construct a melody yet, but I did it enough times that I started to understand what made a good song a good song. I started to understand the ins and outs of songwriting more, and eventually it just got better. I started writing better songs. I've always had this thought on my mind. Are you officially cancer-free? Like, legit? 
It worries me day to day in small reoccurring thoughts. Well, according to the doctor, seven years have to pass before I'm officially considered cancer free. And I know that sounds like a pretty long time, but the good news is that I'm getting MRI brain scans about every three months to make sure the cancer didn't come back, and so far the scans are looking quite good. But even if I'm not officially cancer free, at the very least, I can say that I'm in remission. Have you fully recovered, and are you able to do everything you could before cancer? I haven't quite fully recovered yet, but I'm a lot better than I was a few months ago. But the eating isn't really quite back to normal yet. I mean, before it was really bad, like I'll eat a bite of food and then I'll have to wait five minutes because of the pain that puts me in. And so I would just be at the table. I'd be at the table for like one hour eating the same thing. It's not good, but thankfully that doesn't happen anymore. But I'm still more nauseous than I used to be before I got cancer though. And I still don't have my balance back, which sucks. I don't really mind the eating thing as much, but it would be nice to be able to walk around normally like I used to be able to. What are your plans for life now, specifically career-wise? I'm not really quite sure yet but I might do something related to film. I definitely don't want to do anything related to music. I think that would just take the fun joy out of music for me. Favorite YouTuber? For a long time, it was H3H3 Productions. They're a very important part of why I do this stuff in the first place. But they've really slowed down lately, and I think their main focus is on the podcast. These days, I'm a big fan of The Right Opinion, who basically makes these really well-thought-out analytical commentary videos. Like, I swear, he could probably make an hour-long video, and I'd watch the whole thing. On the humor side of things, I really like Cody Ko. He's very funny. Do you know Asian Andy? If not, watch him. This is the funniest stuff I've seen in a while. Uh, I just checked out his DMV text-to-speech video. Uh, th that was um, that was amazing, honestly. When are you gonna do a face reveal? One million subscribers. If you guys get me to one million subscribers, you might even get to see my beautiful face for the very first time. My son, if capable of growing facial hair, what would you grow? In addition, who do you think would need to run for president for an even more memorable election? First of all, I'd probably choose to grow a nice, steamy mustache. Not like a pedo stash or anything. You know, that's a, that's a no-no. Bad. Very bad. But I could probably grow a pretty good stash, dude. Second of all, I think we should all elect Review Bra for president. Hashtag Review Bra for prez. Never mind that you have to be 35 to run. We can make an exception this one time, okay? Has anyone really been far even as decided to use, even go want to do, look more like? The answer is yes. How has cancer shaped your outlook on life? Okay, uh, time for a tone change. Uh, it was kind of a wake up call. Like, it really made me realize that I shouldn't be relying on other people to try and make me feel better. During the process, I think I kind of developed a neediness for other people. Like, I would hit up people that I never hit up before. I guess I was trying to, like, try to connect with them, you know, but... Here's the thing, we never actually uh, built the connection before the whole cancer thing happened. So as a result, nothing really came out of it, but uh, really awkward and shallow interactions for the most part. And one of the worst things about having to go through the whole cancer thing is just how isolated I was. Like, it kind of does crazy things to a person. Like, I didn't really have that much human interaction, you know? And I guess there was this feeling of hope that, hey, if I reach out to this person, they can make it all better. They can make it better. But that's not exactly a fair expectation. The truth of the matter is that you could be going through terrible things, but the world will just keep spinning. It doesn't really affect them. And a lot of people are very well-meaning. I, I want to stress that. I don't want to sound like I'm saying, ooh, dude, nobody cares about your problems, dude. Um, that's not what I'm trying to say at all. A lot of people are very well-meaning, but because they don't know you, they don't know the situation that you're in, and so nothing that they can really say is helpful sometimes. And I had to learn that I had to stop relying on other people to solve my own issues. And a lot of times with these serious issues, there's also just people who don't want to acknowledge it, or they don't know how to acknowledge it. And that's just something, you know, it really do be like that sometimes, you know? I mean, I can really only speak for myself and for my own experiences. Now, of course, not everyone was like that. There were many cool people, many cool interactions. There were a lot of people who genuinely did care, and it really warms my heart, dude. Like, I, I really do appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. I do remember the positive things. I'm not trying to harp on the negatives. And, you know, cancer has also made me more conscious to appreciate the life that I have. You know, there's a lot of epic, cool things that I didn't really pay much mind to before. Sometimes just going outside in the sunlight, it's like, wow, that's, that's freaking epic. 
And I didn't used to be like that, but these days I'm a lot more appreciative for little things, you know, you feel me? And to close this out, my good friend Artist Unknown has six questions that I will answer. Truly epic, guys. Uh, why were there so many gay undertones in your first album? Candle Boy being the most obvious example. I remember when I was in Spanish class in my freshman year, and I had the track list of my first album written out, and it had Candle Boy on it. And so my Spanish teacher saw it, and he was like, why not Candle Girl, dude? And I thought about it, and you know, it, it just doesn't have the same ring to it. Like, there's a certain ring that Candle Boy has that Candle Girl doesn't. I'm not sexist, guys. Are you actually a chigger? Chiggers, also called harvest mites or red mites, are tiny red mites whose bites aren't painful but do cause intense itching shortly after the bite happens. Uh, that, that's a no. No, I am not. If you could suck... Dude, this is a family-friendly, PG-clean video. This is, this is PG-clean, dude. I'm trying to earn YouTube money here, dude. Of all the epic, epic cartoons you've made in the past, which one would you want to remake most and why? Also, which of your cartoons are you most and least proud of? Okay, so I might have to explain all of this in a future video, but basically, I used to be an artist and animator. I made, like, these animations, I put them on Newgrounds. It used to be my main thing for a while, before I moved to YouTube, and before I added this YouTube channel to the mix. The Willow Tree. This was an animation that I made for a tournament. It shows a man's life when he goes from young to old. He would make it a point to document and bury his memories, so that he could return to it later and be like, Wow, these are, these are some freaking epic memories, dude. What's the oldest idea for something you've had that you would still like to make someday. Probably a rock opera. When I was like 14, I really wanted to make a rock opera. I had everything planned out. It was gonna be like my first album. It never really panned out as much as I would have liked, but I might try it again in the future. Who knows? It's not really high on the priorities, but I don't want to rule it out. How many AV forum points to buy your channel? I would imagine the price would go up as you get more and more subscribers. So please give an in-depth answer based on all the subscriber milestones you think you'll reach. Okay, sir, the only points-based currency I'll accept is Neopoints, and I demand 1 billion Neopoints for every thousand subscribers I have. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Hope you liked it. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I want followers. Please give me followers. And I'll see you next time.